The Tower of London has a long and complex history as a prison. So a day in the life of a prisoner would depend on the time period and the individual circumstances of the prisoner. However, I am going to talk about an example of the day in the life of a prisoner in the Tower of London during the Tudor period. At 5am, a bell would ring to wake up the prisoners in the Tower of London. This was known as a turnkey bell and signalled the start of the day. The bell was rung by the turnkey, who was a prison official responsible for the keys to the cells and supervision of the prisoners. Once the turnkey had rung the bell, the prisoners were expected to get out of bed and prepare themselves for the day ahead. However, the conditions in the tower were often harsh with the small, cold, damp cells that offered little in the way of comfort or privacy. The prisoners would have to make do with whatever bedding or clothing they had, which was often inadequate. After getting up, the prisoners would typically have a few minutes to wash themselves before breakfast was served. The water supply in the tower was limited, so they would have to make do with a small bowl of water and a piece of cloth to wash themselves. The breakfast served to the prisoners was usually a bowl of gruel or porridge and a small loaf of bread. The food was often of poor quality and insufficient in quantity and some prisoners would go hungry or suffer from malnutrition. Overall, the 5am wake-up call was just the start of a long and difficult day for prisoners in the Tower of London. The rest of the day would be spent in a regimented routine of work, exercise and prayer, with little opportunity for rest or leisure. At 6am in the Tower of London, prisoners were expected to attend morning chapel services. This was a mandatory activity for all prisoners and attendance was strictly enforced. The chapel was located within the tower complex and prisoners would be escorted to it by guards. The chapel was an important part of life in the tower and it served as a place of worship and reflection for prisoners. It was also a way for them to connect with the outside world as the services were often led by prominent members of the clergy or other important figures. The services in the chapel were typically brief and followed a strict routine. They would include prayers, hymns and readings from the Bible. The services were conducted in English, although Latin was sometimes used for certain parts the chapel was also used for other purposes besides religious services. For example, prisoners might be brought there for questioning or interrogation by tower officials. In such cases, the prisoner would be escorted to the chapel, where they would be questioned by a magistrate or other official. The questioning might be conducted in private or in front of other prisoners, depending on the circumstances. Overall, the morning chapel services at 6am were an important part of daily life for the prisoners. They provided a sense of structure and routine in an otherwise chaotic and unpredictable environment, and they offered prisoners a chance to connect with something larger than themselves. At 7am in the Tower of London, prisoners were typically assigned to various types of work, depending on their skills and the needs of the tower. The work could range from manual labour, such as cleaning and carrying heavy objects, to more skilled jobs, such as working in the kitchen, laundry or mint. The purpose of assigning prisoners to work was multifold. Firstly, it helped to keep them occupied and gave them a sense of purpose. Secondly, it helped to keep the tower running smoothly by providing labour for various tasks. 
And thirdly, it helped to defray the cost of imprisonment by having the prisoners contribute to the upkeep of the tower. Prisoners who were skilled in certain areas might be assigned to more specialist jobs. For example, a prisoner who was a blacksmith might be assigned to work in the forge, while a prisoner who was a cook might be assigned to work in the kitchen. The workday would typically last for several hours, with prisoners taking short breaks for meals or rest. The work could be strenuous and difficult, particularly for prisoners who were not used to manual labour or who had physical limitations. At 12pm in the Tower of London, prisoners were served lunch. Like breakfast, lunch was typically a simple and unappetising meal, consisting of a small portion of bread and possibly some cheese or soup. The quality and quantity of the food vary depending on the prisoner's status and the resources available to the tower. After lunch, prisoners would usually have some time for rest or leisure. However, this time is strictly regulated and prisoners were not allowed to leave their cells without permission. They might be allowed to read or write, but they were often deprived of books, writing materials or any other amenities that they might make them feel more bearable. Prisoners were also sometimes allowed to exercise during the day, although this too was strictly regulated. The tower had a small exercise yard, but it was only accessible to certain prisoners, and even then only under close supervision. Some prisoners might be allowed to walk around their cells or stretch in place, but any form of activity was generally limited. At 1pm in the Tower of London, prisoners would typically resume their assigned work, if they had any, for the remainder of the afternoon. The work might be the same as earlier in the day, or it might be different depending on the needs of the tower. If a prisoner had not been assigned to work, they would likely spend the afternoon in their cell, with little to do except wait for the next meal or the next scheduled activity. This could be a difficult time for prisoners, as the hours would drag on with little to occupy their time. Occasionally, prisoners might be allowed visitors during the afternoon, although this was a rare occurrence, and usually only granted to high-profile prisoners or those with special circumstances. Visitors were typically family members or friends, and their visits were strictly monitored and controlled by tower officials. In some cases, prisoners might also be interrogated or questioned by tower officials during the afternoon. This could be a stressful and intimidating experience, as the questioning was often designed to extract information or a confession from the prisoner. At 2pm in the Tower of London, prisoners would typically continue their assigned work or spend the afternoon in their cell. However, there were few notable events that might occur during this time. For example, prisoners might be subjected to a medical examination by the Tower physician. The physician would check the prisoner's overall health, assess any injuries or illnesses, and provide any necessary treatment. This was particularly important in the crowded and unsanitary conditions of the tower, where diseases could easily spread. Another event that might occur at 2pm was the delivery of mail or messages to the prisoners. This again was a rare occurrence and usually only granted to high-profile prisoners or those with special circumstances. The messages would be carefully screened and censored by tower officials to ensure that they did not contain any sensitive or forbidden information. In some cases, prisoners might be allowed to attend a religious service or receive a visit from a chaplain. This again was a rare occurrence and depended on the prisoner's religious affiliation 
and the policies of the Tawa officials. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.